Ciao friends! In this video we will see how to transform an expression in DAX returning zero into a blank. This could be useful when you have a visual like a matrix in Power BI and you want to get rid of those rows returning just zero in the measures. You could apply a filter over the visual, but it could be more convenient having just the measure returning blank. This could be useful also in other Cisco senses. Now we have, we will see that we have different uh, options available and they could differ in readability and in performance. So we will compare two of these techniques and we will suggest what to use in one case or in another. So let's start with a demo. So let's start from this report where we have a, a number measure that can result in zero. This is a, a number that is produced by summing a column in the product table and the result is often zero for a category or a subcategory of the products. We're not interested in looking at how this calculation works. This is just the sum of a column and we can see the measure definition here. What is important is that imagine you want to get rid of these rows where the result is zero. Of course, one technique could be filtering out those rows, but in other scenarios, we just want the measure to return blank instead of having to deal with a filter in the visual each time. So basically what we want to obtain, and let's take a look at the final goal, is this result, a measure that shows blank instead of zero. So let's write uh, this measure here, starting from scratch, and let's see which different techniques we can use. So first of all, the measure that we have, the initial measure is this, offset total, which is the sum of the offset column in the product table. So I create a new measure, let's call it test, and this measure will uh, basically reproduce the same offset, the same sum of product offset that we have in the original measure. I want to start with the same definition, and let's include this measure here just to see the result. So at the moment, we obtain the same result. So now I start to modify my measure, and one first technique to obtain this is to use an if statement. So I could check if the result of this calculation is equal to zero, I want to return blank. So an uh, easy way to obtain this is to say, okay, if this is equal to zero, I want to return blank. Otherwise, I want to return the same value of this sum. This could be a measure reference. In this case, I'm just duplicating the entire measure just to show that you can imagine that, yes, this works, but I'm computing the same calculation twice, which is not necessarily a good idea. So this sum is executed the first time to check if the result is equal to zero, and the second time to provide the right number if the number is other than zero. So a good idea is to store this result in a variable. So I can create a variable that has the result of this sum, and I can return this if statement replacing this with the variable name. The advantage of this uh, technique is that I don't have to worry about uh, the double calculation because this will be computed only once. Of course, the result is this the same. Now, this is a good technique. I mean, we obtain the result that we want, but if you know the problem that could arise in terms of performance, using an if statement in a conditional, using a conditional statement, an if statement in a measure, in case this measure is computed with a large amount of products, product categories, subcategories, like in this visual, this could be, this could take longer. This could produce a non-efficient query plan. And we will see something about that later. So first of all, let's think what could be another technique to obtain the same result? Well, we can use, in this case, uh, a multiplication by the result of a divide operation. What does it mean? So let me show you what we could do. So in some offset, we have the value that we want to display. And if this value is other than zero, it's fine. We want to display this number. So let's say that if I multiply this sum offset, so not this one, but sum offset, I want to multiply this number by an expression that is blank if the result is zero and it is uh, one in any other case. Multiplying a number by one will produce the same number. 
I just want to write a different formula that returns blank in case uh, we have zero in some offset. And we have a way to do that in a more efficient way, which is using divide. If I divide some offset by the same number, some offset, of course, the number is always one unless some offset is zero. Because if some offset is zero, a division by zero, the, the result of division by zero will be blank by default. We could provide a third argument with a different result, but in this case, the default value is okay, is fine. And if I click enter, you see that nothing changed here. I still have my result. Now, pros and cons. In terms of readability, this technique is not easier to read. It's not even easier to write because actually it takes some time to understand what is the implication of that divide. So if I go back to the definition of uh, the offset total with the if statement, I prepare this measure in advance. So this is the measure that we have seen in the previous uh, example in the initial report. You see that the if statement is much easier to read. So if you don't have to deal with a large amount of data, probably this is a good idea. It's easier to maintain. But if performance is an issue, then we could go to this technique using the multiplication because this technique provides better performance. But how good, how better is this? Now, in order to see the performance, we have to switch to a much bigger model. Uh, actually, it is the same data model that we have seen before. Uh, we have sales, customer, date, product store. But this time, instead of summing a column in the product table that only had a few thousands of products, we're going to sum the column from the customer table. We created a column offset. So if I open the customer table here, let's see if I can go here. So this is the customer table. The customer table has a column offset, which has a number that produces a similar effect to what we have seen before, so that with just the sum of this column, we will see zero, one, or other numbers. We just want to get rid of the zero. The biggest difference here is that we have more than 2 million customers in this case. So this is the query that I prepared in advance. And this query has uh, the calculation for each uh, customer name. The number of customers, uh, the, the, the number of names of customer would be probably smaller than 2 million, but we still have to evaluate a large number only returning the first 500 because we don't want to actually measure the time required to compute, the, sorry, to display 2 million customers. We want to compute 2 million customers and only spend a small amount of time to prepare the, the, the result and the visualization. We want to measure the calculation time. So I started the server timings. I want to clear the cache and then run the query. And so we're going to measure the, the, the time to execute this query, which is now using the if statement, the slower one. So you see that this first execution took around two seconds. And we have two internal scan made by the storage engine. Even though I just cleared the cache, I had to scan the entire table customers twice. And we also see that we had to materialize uh, something more than 1 million customers. So the materialization also pushed the, the formula engine to consume more time to evaluate the result. So you see that overall, in order to spend two seconds, we had to spend 600 milliseconds in the storage engine and close to something more than one second for the formula engine. So what happens is instead of using the version with the if statement, now I use the version with the multiplication with the divide, which is the formula that we have seen in the previous example. So you just run the query again. You see that this query is much faster. It took just one second. And the main difference is that the uh, the time required to, to, to scan the, the table is much smaller because we had to only perform one scan. So there are several advantages. The formula engine is faster, even though it has to uh, scan the same amount of data because the, the materialization is still uh, producing something more than one million customer names. 
even though we only display 500, but the evaluation of the measure has to be computed for all the rows that are returned here. So we increased the performance by reducing both the formula engine and the storage engine in this calculation. And this is thanks to the divide function, which is way more optimized than if in order to compute similar, uh, in order to manage similar situations. Of course, we had to use millions of rows. If you have just a few thousands of rows, you will probably not be able to notice any difference. So what we have seen is that we can use an if function or a multiplication by divide in order to transform an expression returning zero into a blank, leaving the original uh, evaluation untouched in all the other cases. The difference is that the performance could be different, but only when you have a large amount of data. So if you have a small model, you don't have to deal with the large iterators, use the if statement. It's just much easier to read. But if you have to deal with a large amount of data, we can lose something in readability of the expression, but we can save time, important execution time, and we can get better performance by using a multiplication by the divide function. Enjoy DAX.